<laughs> nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, gay eh, Luigi? I hope she makes a lot of spaghetti. Luigi, look! It's from Bowser! Dear pesky plumbers, the princess is now a permanent guest at one of my seven Koopa hotels! I dare you to find her! We gotta find the princess! And you gotta help us! If you need Welcome. instructions... <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we're done. Welcome to It's Always uh, Sunny in the Mushroom Kingdom. Or Koopaville, depending on how yeah. you want to look at it. Or Brooklyn. Whoa. Mamma mia! Uh, okay, I'm your host, uh, Red Drum Arts. I am, uh, Lugia of Italian descent. And Patrick, also of Italian descent. Woohoo! And, uh, today we got ourselves a double decker. It's Mario's time to shine, and we're talking <laughs> about both of them. <laughs> a Mario movie double dash, if you will. So actually, this leads to a question: How are we going to talk about this? Are we talking about both movies at the same time? Or are we going to um, talk about I the figured... ninety-three film then? The ninety-three first, probably. Yeah, I was thinking okay. ninety-three first, and then we compare Fair and enough. contrast with the modern one. Okay. Yeah, you know it's funny. Uh, two movies, one with Luigi as a main character, one with Mario's main character. It's like basically player one, player two. All so right, please. let's just get right into it then. Jump. Yes, let's uh press start. Let's jump up, superstar. Let's jump. Let's jump right into it. So, when researching these movies, uh, these are the complete polar opposite of each other. Like, not of, also not just in same. reception, but also in production. It's so weird. Okay, so let's just start off with the 93 movie. So this was directed by Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel. Uh, this was back in 1993, where uh, Nintendo was really putting their place in the uh, video game home console market. So by this point, we had the NES, and the Super Nintendo already made its round, so it, they were pretty successful. I mean, the console wars were still going on, but like you couldn't go five feet without someone mentioning Nintendo. Uh, this movie had a budget of about $48 million, and it made $38.9 million. Ooh. And... Wait, no, that's not how Mario says it. He says, ooh! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm not going to beat around the bush. So this is considered by many to be one of the worst movies of all time and one of the shining examples on how to not do a video game adaptation. I don't know what the modern lens is nowadays, but back then this was very polarizing to audiences. It's more positive now. Um, it's kind of a cult film. Some people... I think it's legitimately good. I've not met yeah. anyone who does think it's legitimately good. Uh, well, we'll, we'll get into our thoughts shortly. A, apparently, there is like a uh, director's cut. Some fans was able to cobble together uh, twenty minutes of extra footage, which is insane to me that really? there's such dedicated fans for this. But do you know what the footage yeah. contained? No, I didn't bother to do that much research. I didn't want to <laughs> watch it. So. I have a plethora of material to tell you guys, some of which you already know. Yeah, I, so, I think it's pretty well known that the, the production for this was an absolute nightmare. So, first and foremost, you know how Nintendo is very strict with their intellectual properties, kind of like Disney? Mm-hmm. They were loosey-goosey with this one. They absolutely had no interest in creative freedom, but not freedom, control, like, whatsoever. So they, what, just, they just went, uh, here's, here's Mario, just uh, yeah, they, know, do, do whatever. <laughs> they figured since Mario was already popular in the video game industry, they figured, okay, we can experiment with a film, why not? That... <laughs> See, the what I thought happened is, I thought uh, they had, like... When they heard, like, maybe someone tell them, like, oh, Mario's too weird to sell as a movie, they just believed them. It was like, okay, sure, make your, uh, make, try and make something more grounded. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. You call this grounded? This is the, only grounded thing grounded, relative, the, only thing, uh, the only thing grounded about this movie is that they go underground. I mean, it is grounded compared to, like, the actual Mario thing. Like, they try to come up with, like, some sort of, like, tangible explanation for everything, you know, instead of, uh, like, it's kind of a, it's a pretty generic sci-fi world instead of, you know, whatever, 
world the actual Mario's came out uh, movie is and, and like I'm sure um you know we're kind of used to like the what the Mario world is like now but I'm sure like in 83 especially with the limited graphics the depiction wasn't as like clear cut so uh yeah I don't know I believe that uh this was their attempt at making a grounded version I guess I am curious to hear the thoughts of people who saw the movie all those years ago what they thought considering that this was probably nothing like the games in their mind well, i mean it isn't but i'm getting ahead of myself so i remember when we saw this together we made a bunch of parallels to other movies that is because they were inspired by a ton of other movies mainly the wizard of oz and ghostbusters but also blade runner mad max um die hard jurassic park which is a pretty obvious comparison they they grabbed a lot from other movies from its time the one I thought it felt the most like was uh, the Ninja Turtles movie, and uh, strangely enough, some Paul Verhoeven movies like Total Recall and shit. To me, this felt like like a hodgepodge of Mad Max, Die Hard, and what was the third one I said? Dune. I've like never seen Dune, but I'm gonna trust you on that one. Nor have I, but from what I know of it, this is, I don't know, they walked through a desert at one point, good enough for me. <laughs> okay. But no, mainly, mainly Mad Max and Die Hard. I mean, the desert thing kind of applies to Mad Max, too, because... I know, but I don't know. Dune, Dune is relevant. Dune is relevant. We got Dune Part 2 coming, so... So, according to screenwriter Parker Bennett, the way that they kind of wrote this movie was that Nintendo interpreted the events of the story since this was supposed to be an origin story for the Mario Brothers, and then continue that on from the game, so... The screening writing process took a bit of like a backwards approach where like, okay, this is where Mario is now in the games. How did he get here? And even then it doesn't really work. I don't know. Again, I'm I'm still getting ahead of myself, but like the more the more I read into this, the more I'm like, they were they really thinking about what they were trying to make here? Because there are some elements at play that do translate over, but not all of them fit. I mean, the actors were drunk during production. Who's to say the screenwriters weren't as well? All right, should we get into that part? Yeah. So the main stars of the Super Mario Brothers movie, the Mario Brothers of the Mario family, are Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, you said it right. Okay. Bob Hoskins was not at all happy about being a part of this film. He took a lot of convincing just to agree, and even then, he already did... um. Roger Rabbit and a couple of other movies like uh, I think he was in Hook too he was in a lot of other family friendly movies so he didn't in his words he didn't want to become like Dick Van Dyke uh I think John was more enthusiastic about the role initially he was more excited to see like an actual like Italian American take on Italian Americans because he saw Scarface before and that had Al Pacino but uh the character in that movie was Latino uh, but as filming started, it, well, first off, the script saw a ton of revisions in, like, three weeks. I think they had about, like, six or seven revisions before they settled with one. Uh, there was also a lot of sexual content that was cut out of the final movie, which, for a kid's movie... For a Mario movie. For a Disney movie, that... <laughs> I don't understand the thought process. They were also going to have strippers in there, too. In a fucking Mario movie. How? A Mario movie by Disney. So, as the filming process went into its later stages, Bob and John were not having a good time. They realized this would be a disaster. So, they tried to drink the pain away, which only made things worse because during a one of the chase scenes in the car john accelerated the van too fast than he was supposed to because he was drunk and a sliding door caught bob hoskins hand and he broke a finger during the shoot and needless to say even without that he does not look back on this movie fondly or he did not rest in peace but i have one more thing i want to share and it's the people who would have been a part of this cinematic disaster Okay. Do you know who would have been considered for Mario initially? My first thought goes to Dom DeLuise. No. Okay. Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. 
And when he turned down the role, it would have gone to Danny DeVito. And not only that, he would have also been the director for the movie, but he also turned it down. Really? Yes. As for Koopa or Bowser or whatever you want to call him, they don't call him Bowser in this movie. That would have gone to Arnold Schwarzenegger initially, but he turned it down. Then it would have gone to Michael Keaton, and then he also turned it down. And finally, we got Luigi, who would have been played by Tom Hanks. <laughs> but he turned it down for reasons that uh, the last few roles that he played, the movies weren't box office successes. So wasn't he also working on Forrest Gump at the time? I think so. I mean, Forrest Gump was 94, this was 93, so probably. Same way as you were. So, uh, yeah, no, that's pretty much all I got. Imagine a world where Arnold Schwarzenegger is Bowser. I'm more flabbergasted at the Tom Hanks bit. I can, I can surprisingly buy Arnold Schwarzenegger and everybody else. I'm having a hard time picturing <laughs> Tom Hanks as Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Red? What's your input on all this? I could see Tom Hanks as Luigi, like, specifically Tom Hanks from Big, which I think was only, like, a year or two before. I could see that. I could see Danny DeVito as Mario. I feel like I that could, could probably Danny... work. Not... I could see DeVito as Waluigi, as Wario. I thought, okay, I thought Bob Hoskins as Mario was alright, but I could see it work as Danny DeVito more. It's just a shame that Bob Hoskins wasn't, like, into the role. Well, to be, Maybe, fair, um, to be fair, one thing he didn't mention is that he didn't actually know it was based on a video game. True. Okay, so from from this, what I've read, Bob Hoskins didn't know it was based on a video game until I think either midway through production or when filming wrapped up, and his son told him, and it was at that point that he realized like he made a mistake. I mean, he already wasn't really a big fan of the film to begin with, but that just kind of solidified it. All right, I. I'm going to have a hard time explaining the plot, but I am going to try the best I can. By all means, go for it. The first minute of the Super Mario Brothers movie starts out with a nature documentary about dinosaurs. Narrated, narrated, narrated by Homer Simpson himself. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, okay, I thought that was Bob Hoskins narrating it because it kind of sounded like I. him. But like, no, that... that... <laughs> God, I'm losing it already. Okay, okay. So, we get a history lesson about how 65 million years ago, a meteorite decimated all the dinosaurs and created parallel worlds. You never saw this in your history textbooks. There are parallel worlds in modern day. Flash forward to uh, 1973, where we see... A nun find an egg that hatches into a baby. Human bird baby. That's going to be important. And then we get to modern day, a.k.a. 1993, where we got the Mario Brothers and plumbing's their game. They are rivals of the Scapellis, who basically just sabotage all their operations. It's like they're trying to take over the world. And then Luigi meets a girl named Daisy, who is the, the egg baby. And she's the key to merging the two worlds because she has a rock. And then one day, during a plumbing job, two... I don't want to say gangsters. They're... Are, they, are they Koopas? They're not fucking Koopas. There's just one Koopa. They're henchmen. Just say they're henchmen. Okay. Two henchmen by the name of Iggy and Spike have been kidnapping girls in Brooklyn, New York, one of which is Mario's girlfriend. And if you think that's Pauline, no! Her name's Daniela. And we're not told that until about 20 minutes <laughs> after we meet her. Probably more than that. I don't know. It's a while. <laughs> so, Iggy and Spike eventually kidnap Daisy. Mario and Luigi go after them. Then they end up in a Koopaville, or Dino York. I don't remember the name of it, but it's overrung by King Koopa Bowser, but he's called Koopa. And now it's just a wild goose chase to get the rock and Daisy, prevent the worlds from merging. All the while, Koopa's trying to get the worlds to merge to take over both of them and become the ruler. And that that's pretty much it. Where's Peach, you ask? Good fucking question. Red, you've been awfully quiet this whole time. I want you to start. Um, 
Okay, so I guess my general thoughts of this film is, um, it feels like everything except Mario, you know, we, I think we already mentioned it feels like a different hodgepodge of different fucking movies. Um, I thought it was interesting how, I thought, like, we compare this to, like, Total Recall, and when, the, when we saw the Street Fire movie, we also thought it felt like Paul Verhoeven movies, so yeah. I'm like, man, a lot of video game movies really want to be him. Um, the plot is so fucking dense. So much happens, man. The climax is the most bad shit thing, because, like... There are, like, seven well, moving parts all in one. It has none of the personality of the series. It just takes, like, a lot of specific elements and tries to ground them and, like, Americanize them almost. Because I guess they, they, they like, over-explain almost, because they're like, oh, how is this going to make sense? Um, it almost feels like the Mario property was shoehorned like, into this movie. Confused. No, like, here's the thing, though. Almost every element of the story, I can see which part of the, the games they took it from, but they just, like, interpret it in the most bizarre way. Um, I think it applies to almost every cartoon adaptation, like, Japanese properties at the time. Because even, like, the... Like, the cartoons and shit, they had, like, this, like, um, I feel like this was, like, approached with the same mindset as, like, the Sonic Sat AM cartoon, where they're like, oh, you know, roboticization, um, de-evolution shit, like, it's all very, like, classic, um, Saturday morning cartoon shit. I thought it was interesting how they kept leaning into the dinosaur element of Mario, when, like, that's a really mi relatively minor part. I guess because, like, Yoshi was just introduced, they wanted to capitalize on that. Um, Probably, but he barely gets I any think, screen time. Yeah, and Super Mario Land also like just came out, so I think that's probably why they uh, included Daisy over Peach. Um, I thought the slide segment of the film was interesting because uh, it, this movie predates Mario sixty four, so I'm wondering if this bizarre flick somehow inspired like a pretty fun element of that game. Yeah, we, we just didn't. Were we watching this and being like, there are so many things here that you could tie in to later Mario stuff. Like, I, I said at one point, there's a scene where they're, like, on some metal beams, and they're jumping off of ropes, and I said, this is exactly like that one mini game in New Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, the one where you have to draw the trampoline with the stylus? Yeah. To get the Marios onto the metal beams. I don't know if they ever brought back the fact that Mario's last name is Mario in any other form of media. But you know what? I kind of like it. That shit was kind of funny. So my thoughts. All right. So I never had any intention of watching this movie, which when I think about it is kind of weird because, I mean, it's a Mario movie. Mario is one of my favorite media franchises, and it stars Bob Hoskins and Dennis Hopper, two actors from two of my favorite movies. Like, but it's weird. You take all those elements of things I love. For some reason, this just never caught my interest. Like, I saw clips of it, and I'm like, eh. Were you aware uh, of its reputation ahead of time? I was I was aware of its reputation. I was aware of everything around it. I just never saw the movie in whole. But, Lugia, being friends with you, I knew one day you'd have us sit down and watch it. So, sat down, and okay, it's not good, but I'll admit, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. It was moderately, and okay, it's in a weird, for me, it's in a weird realm between Street Fighter the movie and Resident Evil Apocalypse, not just because it's also a video game movie, but it's also, it's competently made enough, and there's enough quippy one-liners and neat action scenes where I'm like, okay, this, this, I can see this being mindless fun. If you suspend your disbelief that this is supposed to be a one-to-one -one faithful adaptation of the Mario games, yeah, this is... <laughs> definitely enjoyable if even though it goes on a little bit too long i'll say this it is visually interesting like in terms yeah, of i thought it was like kind of exhausting so like i, I didn't really really enjoy it by the end but yeah, like, by I the don't halfway know, I guess... point it does kind of drag out yeah like after like after an hour it's just kind of like after after that point I just restoring 20 minutes i think they should have like stopped, cut out 20 minutes i just stopped following the plot i'm just like okay i just want to see what stupid neat stuff they're gonna do oh yeah also this movie predicted the dancing enemies <laughs> from uh new super mario brothers yep yeah because mario and luigi weasel their way out of a situation but it's only 140 it's only 100 it's only um an hour and 45 minutes that's shorter than i thought it was it still felt long yeah it felt like it was like a two hour and 15 minute film but it's a half hour shorter than i thought it was
I'm gonna wait, let me check IMDb just to double check. Yeah, okay. Well, damn, okay, I still think they should have cut, like, 15 minutes out of this, make it a tight 90. It's just funny, because, like, or at least cut out, like, some plot points, so that way the pacing feels more, less overwhelming. But, yeah, uh, that's pretty much all my thoughts about this film. That's, that, that's the big thing, like, it's, it's, it's visually neat, and there's some cool ideas, but it's, it's just too long. I... It's, and it's not Mario, it's, like we said, it's a weird hodgepodge of 80s and 90s movies. It's and Mario the idea. Movies. Like, it's this weird action movie, it's this weird action sci-fi dystopian film with Mario names, not even Mario characters, just Mario names. One of my favorite examples is Big Bertha, the fish enemy. The fish. Is just some random chick. Also, you know those Goombas? Like, the little mushroom chestnut creatures with Mm -hmm. legs? Mm Mm-hmm. I... I don't even know what they are supposed to be. Just, like, random dinosaur-esque monsters? I'll give credit, even though they look absolutely nothing like their video game counterpart, like, the animatronics were at least, like, neat. I guess. As, as were, like, the car designs. I'll give you that. The cars did look pretty cool. And apparently we only have one Koopaling, uh, Iggy. What happened to the other ones? I don't know. Oh yeah, they had these like two henchmen that were shown to be their cousins, and then they got like the genius ray. Then they kind of just disappear from the movie at one point. Toad is a hippie, and then they're like, "Oh, we were actually the good guys all along, don't you see, Daisy? This giant blob of fungus is your father." Okay, bye. Also, not to get political, but didn't we establish Dennis Hopper plays Koopa plays Donald Trump? Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. If he doesn't play Donald Trump, he at least plays like Biff from Back to the Future too. Uh, he he he, he kind of looks like Donald Trump with the hair and and everything. If you look at him a certain way, yes. Mm-hmm. Like like a younger Donald Trump with a lizard tongue. Mm-hmm. Also, should we address the elephant in the room when it comes to uh politics and natural not natural national? Okay, okay, yeah. Um. So I've seen many. An out of context compilation for this movie. One clip I am absolutely surprised I've never seen in any capacity was the bit in Our World Brooklyn where the Twin Towers disappear and are replaced with the Dinosaur Dimension Towers. And everybody's like, oh my god, look! I don't even know what to say to that. Like, uh, it, it came out like eight years. Like eight years 93. before, but like when you... When you have that, that image, in the history books, it's... That image of the Twin Towers disappearing. Not to mention in the alternate universe, there's already one that's gone. Half gone. Like, of all the things the Mario movie reminded me of, I was not expecting that to be one of them. One more thing. Tangent. Yeah. Whatever happened to the Scapellis? And Aside from the one... To the mon- yeah. One of them turned into a monkey. Um... I don't know, after that, their their business tanked, they filed for bankruptcy, and I don't know. <laughs> so now it is my firm belief that the Scapellis live on in Wario and Waluigi. Their last name is Scapelli. Can you disprove it? I don't think you can. So... I will, I will say, in terms of the dumb, nonsense movies we've seen, this is on the higher end. At least in terms of enjoyability. I would put this on the lower end. I would rather watch something like uh the first two resident evil movies or hell like maybe even mortal Kombat over this and street I mean, fighter I'd, I'd rather take street fighter i did enjoy this a little more than resident evil apocalypse what about you red i'd say of the video game movies we've seen i still think like the first resident evil is probably the best one and i do kind of like street fighter more than this because like it's kind of snappy and like just kind of more openly stupid and like it's, i think it's just a bit more fun um, but I don't know, it's like a Street Fighter. Of Street Fighter had a lot more heart put into it. All right, so do you think we should move on with the uh, the other movie? Yeah, let's let's level up. All right, so from the Super Mario Brothers movie to the Super Mario Brothers movie, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one development wise. Uh, but let's just start off with this. So this was directed by. Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelenic, overseen by and produced by uh, Shigeru Miyamoto from Nintendo. 
budget and box office is completely different. $100 million budget and currently at the box office, $1.21 billion. And still going. Yes. And this only just came out like a couple months ago, right? A month and 10 days as of recording. Yeah, no. And now. it's already like selling fast. Like, goddamn. Like, do you think that this will be like the highest grossing movie of all time by this point? No, no. Of the year, probably, but not of all time. Okay. No How much is Avatar? Over two billion. Two billion? Okay. I think it's like two point. It's like almost three billion. It's not, though. So, again, I don't really have much to say, but um, do you know exactly what inspired this movie to come to be? I'm assuming um, the Angry Birds movie success? Partially that. But according to Shigeru Miyamoto, it was actually the virtual console and how they take old games and then bring them over to new platforms for new audiences to experience. He figured he could do something like that in video form, or in this case, movie form. So Shigeru Miyamoto teamed up with uh, Chris Melendondri from Illumination Studios, and he oversaw basically everything. Like, this, this was his baby. You know how in the original Mario movie, like, Nintendo had almost no involvement in this? It's the complete opposite here. Miyamoto did not want another Mario movie. He wanted his Mario movie. And that's pretty much it. So, uh... What's, what's, the, pl what's the plot of this one? If you could even call it that. It starts off very similar. We got the Mario Brothers and Plumbing's their game. Their business isn't doing so well. Until a flood happens in Brooklyn, surprisingly. So they investigate... You mean, to... a, you mean a flash liquid ultra dousing device? No. Imagine in the sequel we get flood. That would actually be sick. <laughs> but, um... They investigate to see what's going on. They find the green warp pipe that you usually see in Mario games. And they get transported into the Mushroom Kingdom. Where they are separated. Luigi ends up in the Dark Lands. And Mario ends up in, literally, the Mushroom Kingdom. So now Mario has to team up with Toad... And Peach to rescue Luigi from Bowser, who wants to marry Peach. That That is it. This is a very, very straightforward plot in comparison to the other movie. Let me just say right off the bat, this one actually feels like Mario. Yes. Uh, visually, it feels like Mario. What makes you say that? I don't really feel like it gets like the... See, when I watch this movie, like, if you just ignore the visuals, it's a pretty standard, like, bland, generic ki American kids movie, you know, like, like, I don't know, something That's like, like, typically what Mario games films. are. They're, like, they're not yeah. baby's first platformer, but they're very standard. You're but Mario, yeah, you, you have that, an objective, that. save the princess. Not a whole lot of games deviate from that. Not really, but, like, occasionally you'll get, like, a new game. This is, like, very game. Hollywood, that's what I'm trying to say, like, this is... It's not even, like, a traditional kind of story. It's just, like, like even, like, the way they try to twist things up is, like, a very, like, it's kind of, like, the standard way you, you twist it. Like, I don't know. I feel like this is predictable. Like, I don't know, like, uh, Luigi being captured instead of, like, Princess Peach. That's, like, the that's like the first idea you'd pitch out in a movie and try to make it, like, more unique. And I was like, all right, whatever. Okay, let's, let's just get into this part. This movie runs by way too fucking quick. Yeah, that's it is. That is one of my two biggest criticisms, because as soon as, like, example, as soon as Mario gets to the Mushroom Kingdom, he meets Toad, they befriend each other, and that's in, like, the span of, like, a minute. He questions where the hell he is for about ten seconds, Toad questions who Mario is for five seconds, and then takes him to the princess, and it, it just keeps going. Characters, like, acknowledge things are weird, and then they just accept it it's very odd there are a lot of plot threads that are either underdeveloped or go absolutely nowhere like peach being the only human in the mushroom kingdom she has an origin story they don't really go very far with that they just establish that backstory and then they and, pretend like nothing happened and they establish like a side like a, an arc for luigi where he wants to be brave but they, yeah, but like, aside from that like one scene, like where when he's in the hot air balloon, they don't really do much. And then, and then my biggest problem actually is with Donkey Kong, because he and Mario have kind of like this shared uh, "dad hates me" sort of relationship. But then, like Mario says like one sentence, and then Donkey Kong's like, "Hey, I sympathize, bro. Now let's get out of the tsunami together." Like, 
can we at least have time to breathe and talk and just relate? Maybe not in the Unagi, but they never do it again. But, like, I know what Shir Shigeru Miyamoto's thoughts on his games are. They want them to be fun more than, like, tell a cohesive story, which is why we've never gotten a Mario RPG that people liked. Like, I think the last time that happened was with Dream Team uh, back in, like, 2013, I think. Every Mario RPG afterwards, especially Paper Mario, has been the standard go save the princess, all the toads are the same. Like, we don't have, like, any interesting interactions with anybody. Okay, pacing aside, my other big complaint with the movie is the pop music. Yeah, the music so choices boring. are Here's distracting. The thing. Here's the thing. The instrumental score is fantastic. The integration of all the various Mario themes over the years, it's great. And then out of nowhere, they'll play Take On Me, or holding out for a hero or thunderstruck or, and it's so distracting or mr blue sky it, at the end and they only play it and it, they're not even that long they're like 10 sec 10 to 30 seconds like you're driving through the the donkey kong world it, like why take on me you could have had like in my head i'm thinking you could have like one of the donkey kong mario kart tracks playing that would work great like, and what i don't... does take on me have to do with donkey kong i th- I think it's just a creative decision. It couldn't have been a budgeted decision. Like, Nintendo was the richest company in Japan. They have, like, not all the money in the world, but a lot. So, like, why not make more original, well, original music, I say. Just, like, more orchestrated Mario themes. <sighs> but honestly, like, okay, pacing and pop music aside, like, I had, a, I had a great time with this. Like, I wouldn't say it's a great movie, but, like, if you're a Mario fan, like, this... This is like a joy. I like just wish everything I'd want. there was more substance with this movie. Maybe in a potential sequel, we'll actually get these plot threads getting somewhere, but... Here's the thing, I don't mind if like a movie's plot is flimsy as long as the characters are strong, and that, that was just my main issue, is that outside of Bowser, I felt like the characters were nothing. Like They just felt like they just got like a template character and then just like kind of... They're like, okay, let's just get like a generic kind of hero character, you know, make him like Mario, generic sort of like strong princess character. Um, Luigi, I guess, was kind of like him, but he's also like barely in the film. So yeah, uh, the only character that I really thought like felt like their game character and also had like a prominent role was Bowser, because like there was like some little nuances, and that's that's the thing. It felt like Mario, but felt like some like the details and nuances were off. Like um, even design wise, I thought every character looked a little bit off, except Bowser, which I thought like mostly looked right. I remember when we were driving home from the movie, you said one of your big issues with the designs was the eyes. Yeah, I don't know what's... With Donkey Kong in particular, I thought, like, the eyes were, like, weird, but, like, uh... I kind of see it more with the Mario like, Brothers. I think Donkey Kong yeah, looked okay. Uh, well, Donkey Kong, like, I think we know, so he looked more of, like, how, like, Miyamoto draws Donkey Kong versus how Rare draws it, and, like, so that, that's probably what threw me off. I think it looked fine. It, it had, like, this, like, classic now, arcade look to it. I think it worked. I got uh, one complaint that's probably going to sound weird, but um, I, this honestly kind of applies to like every animated f- recent anime film, but I feel like I feel like animation tech has gotten like too good lately because like sometimes I watch these movies, I look at like the character's skin and it's like it it feels too detailed for like these cartoony things. So I'm like I, I get like a like a slight uncanny valley. It didn't bother me too much with the Mario Bros, but like Peach and Toad, I was just like a, it just like very slightly turned off. Like they looked fine, but I was just like. There's just something ever so slightly wrong just because, like, the skin felt, like, so detailed. And I was like, ugh. Kind of like, here, here, let me, like, uh, post, a, like, an example. But, like, uh... And I know, I know what you mean. I've, I've heard this complaint before from other people. Um, I personally was never bothered by it. It, it, it didn't, like, it doesn't bother me that much, but it's just, like, man, like, it, it's kind of, like, weird, like, seeing, like, just, this kind of just, like, level and detail of something that's, like, so simple with, like, if you look at Toad and like um the actual games, it's just it just kind of plays it like pretty like flat. But this one they like they show like the skin stretch just a li- and it's just like it's it's subtle, and it doesn't like bother me like that much. But it, I just figured like I I I point it out just because like I did notice it. I was like, huh, well, it looks kind of weird when I like think about it for a sec. I think in motion it's all right. I wasn't really too distracted by it personally, but I can see what you mean like yeah. at a standstill. But yeah, I thought this felt like very uh this felt very Hollywood, like a very kind of like safe, 
a generic uh, Hollywood Kids movie, which is like fine. If you have a kid, definitely show it to them. They'll like it. I, I just I thought told, it was kind of interesting because I kind of thought 93 also felt like very Hollywood. So I, I just think it's very interesting how adaptations have changed in the last like 30 years because, um, yeah, it, it just kind of feels like, because this is like, um, this is kind of like how a lot of Hollywood like adaptations like kind of handle the IP. Where it's like, I will say this. I, I told you guys, I can, I, if somebody were to tell me they prefer the 93 film over this one, on some level, I can understand it because it is weird and it, it does take more risks, even if it doesn't work a lot of the time. Watch, someone's going to make a video essay on how the work. Mario movie is better than this one. But, give it but, time. But, 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 like, I can understand if somebody were to prefer the 93 film to this one. But, as a Mario movie, this one beats it out by like a mile. Yeah, this one is overall the better product, hands down. This one feels more like Mario. It looks more like Mario. It sounds more like Mario. Like as like as a movie, it's not great, but as like a Mario experience, it is a blast. I had so much fun just like listening for all the little musical references, spotting like stuff in the background, traversing through these big worlds with so much detail and like all the like the Mario Kart stuff and the action scenes and the power ups and like it, it's a, it's a great actually, scene. I got a good metaphor. It just—it's just great seeing it come to life. Like, have you guys seen um Illumination's Grinch movie? No. Have. You have, uh, Patrick. I have, yes. That's what this movie kind of reminded me of. Like, a, just like a, cause like that movie's still visibly the Grinch, but it just felt like a little bit like, like all the edges were kind of sanded off, and that's like that's what this felt to me. I guess almost like it just felt like a very, very safe. Because I feel like like this would be, you, this would make sense like if you're not familiar with like the Mario series at all, um, then you'd also appreciate if you were a fan of the Mario series. You'll get more out of it if you're a Mario fan, but yeah, you can you can watch this with no knowledge. It is guess, basically just another origin story, but one that Miyamoto like, actually likes. Kinda, which is weird because like plot structure wise, this really isn't like that different from like the 93 movie because like it's like the first act at least is like pretty it much does the exact begin same. And end, it does begin and end pretty much the same way the middle is all different but the middle this time instead of like a bunch of batch and stuff with like way too many details this one i mean this one kind of has way too many details but this one uh but it just rushes through them a lot faster which is both i guess a good thing and a bad thing i don't know um yeah but this time it's more of a generic kind of a hollywood movie Actually, did I we talk like... about the voice acting? I can't remember. Not we yet. did not. I was just gonna bring that up. We should probably acknowledge the elephant in the room. So, okay. Elephants. Chris Pratt is Mario. Thoughts? Okay. So I when... thought he was okay, but it it felt like a, a just like a touch bit forced. So like throughout the movie, I was like a little distracted, but it wasn't like that bad. Okay, so I was never on the hate wagon for Chris Pratt as Mario. Like he's far from my first choice, but. Like, that's just standard industry practice at this point. Like, you know, celebrity voices, whatever. Like, I get why people were mad, because Charles Martinet is there. But I was personally never upset by it. Hearing him in the movie, he's fine. Like, it's a bit weird at first, but you get used to it. And they even acknowledge in the movie the lack of an accent. I thought it was all right. He grew on me. I wouldn't say he was a standout performance by any means, but... He was better than I initially thought he was gonna be. He d he did he did the job. He didn't. He also didn't say that a uh, mushroom kingdom. Here we come. He he didn't say that line in the movie. Honestly, though, the the voice that distracted me was Cranky Kong's. A lot of people complain yeah, about he's, Cranky Kong. He's the worst one. I know that's not a common complaint, but it's no. It is a common complaint. That's what we're saying. I mean, no, wait, no, that isn't what I, I'm. 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 That isn't a unique complaint. That's what I'm saying. It's not a unique complaint, but. I like. I felt like you could have gone with a voice, a voice that was older, also a bit more like rough. A lot of people really. I, I too. I really like Jack Black as Bowser. I want to give a special mention to Kevin Michael Richardson as Kamek. I thought he did good. He did great. Like the way that he like did his voice, like not like an Igor sort of voice. What am, the king of the Krupas. Yeah, like that reminds me of something. Like not Igor. But like um, something else. The first thing I think of is that that one line in Aladdin. Uh, I can't bring people back from the dead. Yeah, 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 that. And there's also there's also a Looney Tunes character that sounds exactly like that. I don't remember his name, but 
he was like this caricatured human character. You guys know who I'm talking about? No. It's, it's like one of the older Looney Tunes characters. Like one of the he wasn't a, a common occurring character, but he, he he appeared in a few cartoons. If you saw him, you'd know who it was. Okay. Um, I thought Charlie Day as Luigi was also a nice fit. I just wish we saw more of him though. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong is exactly what I thought he would be. He even did the laugh a couple times. He wouldn't be my first pick for Donkey Kong, though. Who would your first pick be? Out of curiosity. Danny DeVito? No. <laughs> um, actually, no! Now that I say that, probably. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Spike's in this movie. But not the Spike, like the enemy Spike. Uh, Foreman Spike. From Wrecking Crew. That's an obscure reference that almost no one got. But it is, it is neat. Oh, speaking of references, like, this movie's chock full of them. Oh, we already like, not... established the musical score. Yeah, the music. Uh... It's also just background stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Not just from Mario, but from, like, other Nintendo properties. Like, there's Punch-Out on a pizza place. Mario plays Mario Kid plays Icarus, Icarus at Icarus. one point. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the bear from Ice Climbers is on a poster in Mario's room at the end. I know a lot of movies just, like, have a bunch of these details nowadays. I wonder if it's just because of, like, um nerd culture being more popular or if it's like just because like the internet allows people to just like <laughs> look up characters and wikis and i know i, know. I know i know predominant like easter egg hunting movies bother people i'm fine with them like once in a while isn't that kind of the like, point of animation to pick out well, all yeah. the little details well yeah but, but i mean like... it's in, like it's not just animation and uh i think more people are just like People aren't bothered by the Easter eggs. They're just bothered by like when uh people like with the Mario movie. Any like uh with this one specifically, like I saw some people like criticize the movie as like some of the same criticisms that I did, where like they just thought it felt like kind of generic Halloween. People are like, oh, but look at all these references. You know, clearly there was passion. I was like, okay, but that does that doesn't like change anything. And like also, it's not that hard for a person to just like google shit to put his background references or like nintendo could have just given him like a list of characters and they'd be like okay like, yeah just I, toss I know references do not make a good movie but like, yeah i think like it's like, fine yeah it's it fine. can be cute like, for background gag but it's like like as a fan it's like fun yeah and also you know, like for, for, for studios it's fan. like free marketing because like every youtuber ever every nerd youtuber ever makes like videos about like oh look at these references so like it's free advertising so you know I'm going to call out one thing, though, and this is just, this is kind of me being nitpicky, but in the Mushroom Kingdom, why are there no Toadettes? Like, it's, it's all, it's all Toads. And I know for a fact they know Toadette is there, is, is a thing, because there are posters in the Mushroom Kingdom with Toads and Toadettes on them. Like, when so we're why, in the town uh, square, there's no Toadettes. Yeah, so why, why is the Mushroom Kingdom a sausage fest? So that's the question. Are there ever multiple Toadettes, or is it just one? Because I feel like no, in all the games, they just have one. Well, okay, I've never seen, like, a different color variation, but there are multiple Toadettes. In the Mario RPGs, there are different Toads, both male and female. They each have yeah, different designs. I don't know designs. the RPGs, but I might like the mainstream games. Because it just kind of felt like, uh, like Smurfette and Smurfs, where there's, like, there's only one. I was like, okay. Also, um, one other minor nitpick, and again, this means nothing, but when Mario got hit with the mini, with the mini mushroom power-up, that should have killed him. Yeah. <laughs> that, I I've pl I I spent my childhood playing New Super Mario Brothers. I know for a fact that should have killed him. It's not even a power up; it's a power down. <laughs> it just hurts you. I do like how they reference the uh, poison mushroom when like Toad tells Mario not to touch the blue one, but he's like, "Oh wait, that's blue. Never mind, that one's okay." <laughs> wait, we we didn't acknowledge the other elephant in the room. Uh, the Peaches song. Yes. Again, Jack Black killing it as Bowser. So, all right, you guys knew that that song was going to be in the movie. I knew of the song. I knew I there was a it. song. I knew nothing about the song. I thought it was going to be like a rock ballad. I didn't think it was going to be like like a rom romantic ballad. I had, okay, so I had heard that there that Jack Black did have a song in the movie, but I didn't know anything about it. Uh, when it came up, I, me and my, when I first saw it for the first time, me and my friends, we died laughing. And even even when I saw it again with you guys, I knew it was coming. Still got me. <laughs> it, it's like it's it's so out of nowhere, but it's it's so it's so funny. And it's just peaches, 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 peaches. 
Like, that, you know, that, that if we get the villains from other Nintendo games to like make a band together, I think it it would absolutely fuck. I mean, we got Bowser on piano, Ganondorf on organ. I'm just reminded of the uh, I'm the boss. Except that Sephiroth's is a, not a Nintendo that is a, villain. That is a cert, that is a certified classic. My life was like a video game. I'm amazed they never used that. I'm happy for it. That would be like in a Ready Player One movie, maybe not this one. <laughs> Ready Player Two. Yeah. So I don't think Ready Player Two is gonna get made. All in all, <laughs> it's fun, but not fulfilling. It's candy. It tastes yeah, good. It makes much. you feel good. But that's it. There's like no satisfaction. As a movie, it's good. But as a Mario experience, get a bunch of your friends together, go to the cinema, kick back, you'll have a great time. Um, I just... My opinion of both Mario movies are about the same. I think they're about as good. And I think uh, just one is maybe um, a bit weirder and the other is a bit more, uh, I don't know, standard. The, I guess, yeah, it, I guess are... it's really I guess it's really what you're in the mood for. Yeah. Like I guess like I, I wouldn't like not recommend either, but like I'm not I wouldn't I wouldn't say like I'm I'm particularly like a fan of either film, so I'm just kinda like I just hope that I don't feel like my sequel. time was wasted, but like I don't think I'm ever gonna revisit these movies. My hope is that in a potential sequel, because they're obviously gonna make a fucking sequel. Look how much money it raked in. I just and hope they we'll develop like these characters more. Them. Not maybe not on the same level as like the Mario RPGs, but something. At least don't fucking rush the plot this time, please. Yeah, overall, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm I'm not a fan of the movies, but I don't think they're like that bad. So, I don't know. honestly, that's kind of my opinion. Like most Illumination movies, I'm just like, yeah, it's fine. Um, so recommendation for next week, Patrick. It's your turn, me. and this one's and, gonna be oh, a also, special uh, one. But, oh, and also, um, if you're a fan of the uh, 93 Mari movie, check out stuff like Ninja Turtles and uh, the Street Fighter movie. If you're a fan of this one, literally check out anything the from Birds the 80s movie. and 90s. And the Grinch. Dune, Die Hard, Jurassic Park, yeah. Ghostbusters, of, Blade the, the Runner. Mari, if you're a fan of the new Mari movie, check out either uh, Illumination's Grinch, um, the Angry Birds movie, and like... Really, any animated kids movie. This feels like a lot of different animated kids movies. It is weird hearing you endorse Illumination's Grinch because I know you do not like that movie at all. Oh yeah, I know I hate it. But like, if you like this movie, you might like that one. No, like I'm anyway. not really, like like I said, I'm not a fan of like any of these movies, honestly. Anyway, yes, it's time. Episode one hundred. What hit, you got? We've hit the big one zero zero. All right, now. When I figured out that in our rotation board, episode 100 would land to me, that got me thinking, all right, so episode 100, I got to go big, right? <laughs> it feels appropriate to go big. I mean, you only get one Jamal 100. Leafly. You only get one 100. So I thought about it, and I'm like, big, big, big. And it dawned on me. When it comes to Hollywood, what's bigger than a James Cameron movie? Titanic? Don't get ahead of me. Don't get ahead of me. We, I'm genuinely surprised we have not given James Cameron the spotlight until now. True lies and, and know, Terminator on my list. When, but yeah. when it comes to James Cameron, I got a whole spiel. When it comes to James Cameron, you know, he's got a lot of hits under his belt. A lot of classics. So... Which one? Well, we're going to go with the one that, I don't know how big of a statement this is, but I think this is the film where James Cameron started to become the James Cameron we know today. That's right. For episode 100, we're taking a look at James Cameron's classic, the one that starts with a T, The Abyss. Okay. The Abyss. <laughs> you thought I was going to say Titanic, huh? I thought you were going to say Terminator. <laughs> no, you know me. I like to throw a curveball. And in fact, The Abyss was actually the first James Cameron movie I've ever seen. What's funny is that The Abyss is the only James Cameron movie I haven't seen. Ah. <laughs> actually, wait, no. I have seen Piranha too, but it's just been a while. I don't remember anything about it. 
True Lies is on my list just because like I think that's like such a weird and fun movie. Yeah, The Abyss, that'll be fun. That's uh, when he finally revealed to the world that he's obsessed with water. Mm-hmm. Well, unless you count Piranha 2, but... Yeah, but, I mean, that's his sequel. That wasn't, like, really him. Whatever, but... Yes, it is uh, now time to let the cam man shine. Okay. Hey, curiosity, what... Wait, um, so, Red, you've seen every James Cameron film except this one? Yeah. No, wait, I haven't seen Titanic. I forgot about that. Wait, really? You've never seen, Tit- You've never seen Titanic? Yeah, it just, it just never came up. Really? Huh. Yeah. I've seen all of his action movies then, I guess. I haven't seen his uh, romance. Lugia, what's your stance on... Jin- what, what have you seen from him? Titanic. I think that's about it. That's it? I've never seen Terminator. I've seen, okay, yeah. I've seen, I've seen The Abyss, I've seen Titanic, and I've seen both Avatars. Yeah, I haven't yeah, seen his uh, I haven't seen his documentaries. Oh yeah, uh, Ghost of the Abyss. That's that's and not the aliens one. Of that's the not deep. the one we're seeing. We're just seeing. Oh no, I've seen Abyss. Aliens. Okay, make that another one. No, there's a there's Ghosts of the Abyss and Aliens of the Deep. So he has two movies that uh, reference Aliens and the Abyss. But yeah, um, no, the, uh, his filmography um started with Piranha Two and then he became big with uh, Terminator, and because of Terminator he got hired for uh, Aliens. And then, um, then he made Terminator 2 and became the biggest director in the world. <laughs> and after that, it was just, like, uh, million, billions of dollars after billions of dollars. I mean, he made billions of dollars, like, with Terminator and Aliens also, but, like, Terminator 2, like, put him to, like, a next level. He then made True Lies, Titanic, and then the Avatar films. Actually, he made The Abyss before Terminator 2, so I forgot about that one. Okay. Episode 100, we, we made it. Took us... oh, James Cameron is also a writer. I forgot about that. He wrote a couple movies too. He wrote a uh, he wrote Rambo two, which is um the inspiration for Metal Gear Solid. So technically, you have uh James Cameron to thank for Metal Gear. How does that make you feel? Kojima has interesting taste. Oh yeah, dude, it's so funny when you find out like the inspirations for like Metal Gear, and it's like John Carpenter's uh, Escape from New York, uh Rambo two, The Rock by Michael Bay. I was like, huh, these are all, like, really, like, meat-headed things. Like, he, he once tweeted how, um, Fast and Furious 6 made him depressed because he doesn't think he'll be able, he'll ever be able to edit something as good as that. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> like, he just, like, really loves editing in that movie, and I was like, okay, that's cool. Yes, join us next week for episode 100! <laughs> how, how, we, how we close on this one? How did they... And uh, Hotel Mario. Oh. You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> uh, d- Thank you for uh, watching our podcast. gonna start